There's another Blackmagic Design press conference. It's just happening now, or if you're watching this, it happened a little while ago. This is the second one inside a few weeks that they've done. Last time out, we looked at the web presenter, the ah, hell, who cares? There's a new one today. What we are hearing about from Grant Petty, and I'm gonna say a word about Grant Petty in advance. When he does these things, it's really early in the morning in Australia, but I could listen to that all day. He's the guy who I want reading the audiobooks. He's real chilled out, he goes into a tremendous detail. What a great guy. This is the second announcement Blackmagic have done inside a month. I might as well cancel my ticket to NAB. I'm not really sure what else is going to be happening. Certainly nothing else from Blackmagic, unless there is. Anyhow, the idea of this video is to take you through the hour and 10 minutes or however long the Blackmagic presentation was in a much shorter time. Now, you know I like to talk, so I will just see how we go. The, we'll break this up into two separate videos. If you want to see the color control panels that have been announced, then you can click somewhere in the appropriate space on the screen. I reckon about here. Um, if you stay, if you're sticking around, we're going to talk about the Ursa Mini Pro. The Ursa Mini Pro is a new camera that was unveiled for, well, there was a lot of reasons. Here's a little bit of it. You know, original camera design was in some ways more about doing a camera for color correction. We really felt that a lot more work you know, could be done. You know, the issue we had is we couldn't pull enough detail out of video. And it goes on, but the idea is that Blackmagic, they started out with the Ursa, and the Ursa was a big, hefty camera, and it was going to be upgradable and modular, and it is. But the uptake on that has been pretty poor, as they admit themselves. Maybe down to the fact that it's a massive camera. Maybe down to, there could be loads of reasons. I like the Ursa, I don't like it with the 4K sensor, but I do like the Ursa. The Ursa Mini, much more usable camera. Enter Ursa Mini Pro. It's the exact same form factor as an Ursa. So I made a few notes. Let's have a look what we've got. One thing worth saying is the Ursa Mini Pro is available now. We we'll had to wait until the end of the presentation to find this out because I was expecting it to say, right, we'll be available in a few months. Well, we know with Blackmagic Design that could mean a couple of years. The, it is available now, which when they said this a couple of weeks ago, I ordered it there and then, it turned up two days later. That was available now. Let's we'll try the same with the SM Mini Pro and see what happens. I'll be phoning around first thing in the morning. If you, it's the morning wherever you are, give b a call or whoever your local camera store is. Let's find out. In the Ursa Mini Pro, they've done all sorts of different things. Most noticeably, they've put buttons all over it. If you're familiar with Sony FS7 or the Canon C300, 500, 700, or any other camera, there's plenty of buttons around. That, that's what you're used to. That's what you, you know where stuff is if it's on buttons. And the Ursa was pretty good. It had buttons, but they were all the same. You, you kind of relied on muscle memory. There's built-in redundancy throughout this camera, which is to say if one button packs up or goes wrong, there is multiple different ways. So there's a few different ways of turning it on and off. There are three different ways to change the iris, the shutter, all the rest of it. That's really quite cool. These are, these are features that we're kind of used to having on other cameras, but Blackmagic, we have to remember, they weren't a camera company until a couple of years ago. They produced, well, ATEMs and live stuff, and acquired other companies to get things. Well, they've been making their own camera stuff for a little while now. It came out to rapturous applause early on and then shipping delays and shipping delays and shipping delays meant that maybe we'd lost a bit of trust. Then came the 4K sensor in the Ursa, which, yeah, it was 4K and, and lit well in a studio environment. It was a great looking sensor, but it was pretty weak, particularly with what else was on the market, but the price point was right. Blackmagic Design have aimed to right all of these wrongs now and the Ursa Mini Pro is quite aggressively priced, very much so when you compare it to other cameras on the market. Let's jump straight to that bit because I know you'll want to know. Now the price is $5,995. As it stands right now, this is the UK site you see behind us. The pricing is in US, so they clearly haven't quite got up to speed with, the, uh, with how much it's going to be in different countries at the moment. So they've just put these up as holding. In fact, let's refresh that. No. Still US currency, but for the most of you out there, that, that'll be fine. Now, what does it have on it? That's, well, it comes with an EF mount as standard. Like the Ursa, but unlike the Ursa Mini, you can change the lens mounts. And the lens mounts, were, what we, gave a, we were given a demonstration of how easily the lens mounts would change. It's four bolts to get the EF mount on. Oddly, five to put a B4 on. It looked like it took a couple of minutes to do. 
and aside from getting dirt and ingress into the sensor it was a pretty simple job you can buy the EF mount, which is $175, you can buy a PL mount, which is 300 and no, it's 275 You can buy a B4 mount, use it in windowed HD to, to make that uh, the B4 lenses work. They're all really cheap. They're a lot cheaper than the Ursa upgrade uh, interchangeable lens mounts that they had before. That's pretty cool. It's the same 4.6K sensor that you are used to seeing in the Ursa Mini and Ursa 4.6K, obviously. This time they've put in all of the things that you'd expect to see. Blackmagic have, have announced that this is, and, and I'm sure we've heard this before in the, in the previous Ursa, this is three cameras in one. It's a studio camera, it's an EMG camera, and it's a whatever the others, a cinema camera. They've put on the front of it auto white balance. If you've got, uh, I think any Sony camera, most Sony cameras would have auto white balance on the front of it. Really useful, particularly if you're just doing run and gun stuff. It has buttons for the electronic iris directly onto the camera body in a in a position that you'd expect. Not too far away from if it was on the lens, it's just a different finger. Uh, it could do 60 frames a second in 4.6K. It records onto CFAS cards as before. Now, if you're like me, I don't like CFAS cards. They, well, they don't work with many other things. Most things I use, the video assist, the... Web, uh, the Hyperdeck, the, all the different cameras that we've got, most of them, you know this, I don't need to go on about that bit. Um, so two SD card slots, two CFast card slots. Providing you've got the right speed of card, you, you can record whatever you like to either card. I will say at this point, the redundancy that was talked about quite a bit, about using the Ursa and Ursa Mini and Ursa Mini Pro in rugged environments, which, which is really good, that didn't extend to putting covers onto the card slots. Um, the cameras are bulletproof. If you've ever used one, picked one up, or even dropped one, they're solid magnesium bodied things. They are bulletproof. Really weird to not see card covers on the actual unit itself. Alas, you can switch between CFast and SD card. You can actually stripe record through all four different card slots, which is kind of cool. Uh, it can, given the correct speed of cards so it's UHS2 cards for SD cards you can record in 10-bit RAW uh, or ProRes 4444 XQ what more could you ask for the as we said earlier it's exactly the same footprint as the Ursa Mini it's got built-in ND filters I don't know if I mentioned that if I haven't there it is three-stage ND filters with 0, 2, 4 and 6 on there dead useful on a dial exactly as you'd expect Weirdly, you can get these from the menu as well, so there may be a motor there that switches them on and off. Apparently, there's better preamps in the... I've never found the preamps to be a problem in the Ursa Mini at all. They were pretty solid. Um, the preamps in things like the Blackmagic Pocket Camera, well, they are terrible, but the Ursa I found to be pretty low noise. Apparently, they're much, much better now. As we mentioned, there are loads of buttons, but one thing that's quite cool is there is a high frame rate button, which is to say, in the middle of your shot, if you press HFR, it'll change the frame rate to record in 60 frames at that point. So, if there's uh, you're shooting your documentary and it all kicks off, hit HFR and it'll start recording in high speed for you. Very nice. They've changed the displays slightly. The Ursa, if you remember, had a, a 42 inch widescreen TV mounted onto the side of it the Ursa a 32, and this one has got a four inch screen on the side. Looking at the video, it, I've got to say, I think that looks a bit small. On the back end of that, there was a black and white display. You remember them? Apparently reads better, I can imagine it does. That will display all of your shooting information, shutter speed, iris, time code, uh, frame rate, etc. If you want to use it as a studio camera, it's got the program button that the studio cameras have before. So if you're feeding an SDI program return into the camera, hit program, it'll show you what the output from the, the switcher is. Being the studio camera as well, it'll have, he didn't talk about it, but the ATEM color control, which would be kind of cool. And headphone support for iPhone star headphones, uh, uh, headphones with a mic on, so you can use the headphone jack for talkback as well. There's a few extra bits that they've released for it, as well as SD card and CFast card, which to be honest is probably most of the things you'd ever need. They've sort of, I, I guess, effectively modified a Hyperdeck shuttle into a different form factor to mount straight on the back. There's two, HDS, tw two 12G HDSDI cables that plug straight in from it, and that's an optional extra, so you can put a 
480 gig, 500 gig SSD on there and record forever. Cool, if you want it. That is available now, not all functions are available now. So the SSD recorder, that's not available now. The camera is available now. Some of the software implementation uh, or some of the bits of firmware aren't quite available, but will be available mid-year. Black magic time, let's say end of year. That is the button that takes stills. I think that's a biggie. And the channels three and four on audio. Apparently there's something major in the software that means that's not possible. That's kind of it. Ah, there is one other thing. If you are an Ursa owner and you have been thinking about upgrading or you're not, ah hell. If you own an Ursa, there is an upgrade route for you now. It, the upgrades were there to upgrade your 4K to 4.6K, but if you fancy the Ursa Mini Pro, and I've got to say, I can't think of a single reason why you wouldn't, there is now an upgrade path for it. Now, the details aren't yet available on the website. However, now bear with me because I'm reading between the lines of what Grant said here, but for $3,500, you can upgrade your Ursa to an Ursa Mini Pro, which is $6,000. But he did say, and I'm, I, I, was it a Freudian slip? I don't know, that you end up with two cameras at the end of it. So what I'm reading from that is you pay your money you get the new Ursa and you keep your old camera. We're going to check on that because I'm not sure about that. If you do, very cool. Um, if not, well, I still think that's pretty reasonable. That's pretty well it for that. Um, we, I'm not due to be down at BVE tomorrow, but I'm going to make a call first thing in the morning to see if they have any on the Blackmagic stand. If they do, rest assured, I will jump down there and bring you some more. So if you do have any questions, do let me know. As always, I'll be, well, I'll carry on with the normal videos, but the next opportunity to really get hands-on with them, I think, will be NAB. Um, I'll put in a call before then, see if we can't get one. But that's pretty cool. Why you couldn't have done this a couple of weeks ago in the other press conference, I don't know. What they're going to talk about at NAB, I do not know. If you like what I do, say so on the likey thing please do subscribe and uh well we'll see you in another video